Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries. And I want to share something. I, I observed, okay, I witnessed rather. I think I like that better. I witnessed a little encounter this week. And uh, I was on the bus. And there were two men, drunkards, the Bible would call them. <laughs> they were in the back of the bus, just acting, just cutting up. And they were holding each other up and they weren't really bothering anybody, you know, like cussing or anything like that. They were just being obnoxious and annoying. <clears throat> so in their stupor and they're leaning all over each other. And I guess if they leaned on somebody too much or was too loud, they thought it too loud. They were very polite drunkards. Okay. And they were apologizing or whatever. But in the midst of all this, now I'm sitting toward the front, uh, in the front. And then... I saw a man come with a little girl. I guess she was about maybe first grade, so maybe like six or seven, something like that. And he had her by the hand, and in the other hand, he had a, a bag. I think it was like from Panera or something. And I'm only saying that only because it, it was their meal or whatever, okay? So he has his daughter by the hand, and he's looking back. She's just kind of like holding daddy's hand, and okay, he says, okay, baby, sit, sit over here. And they moved up to the front of the bus. So the father, as the little girl was sitting down, the father kind of mumbled under his breath. He said, I'm not putting up with that. No, not around my baby. I'm not putting up with that. My little girl, not no. And then he looked down at her and he didn't really say it to her, but he said, no, you don't need to be around that. And it was so cool. She goes on, she sits down by the window, and he sits in the aisle seat, and she's looking out the window, and she's just kind of, you know, and he's, you know, every once in a while he would glance back, kind of like out of the corner of his eye, and he kind of glanced back, just making sure everything's okay, and he still had his, you know, the bag with their food in it, and then it was time for them to get off, and, she, you know, he grabs her hands, come on. And, you know, and they're going off the bus. And as they're going off the bus and she, he's still holding her hand and they're skipping. And she's skipping, not him. <laughs> you know, just kind of like real light and everything. Like, I'm holding daddy's hand. I'm with daddy. She didn't have a care in the world. And it was just so cool. And then, of course, the bus the, at the back door, they went out the front door. At the back door are these two men. The father, he turned back. And then when he saw that they were so in involved and engaged and holding each other up and he just turned back around walked off with his daughter in one hand and the meal in the other and it just made me think about daddy God here was an example in the flesh in the natural of a father watching out for his baby girl making sure she was okay and I saw the bag you know as provision daddy providing for us right so holding a hand, holding with one hand, holding her hand. And she didn't, she was just going on and just like, you know, daddy said move to this. She didn't say a whole lot of why we have to move again. Why we were sitting in the back. Why do we, she didn't do all that. <laughs> she, he was like, come on, baby. And she went and sat down. And then she was just kind of, she was cool. Everything was fine. The world was all good. And then in the other hand, he had provision. That's God. That's our dad protecting and providing and he was the one dad the dad he's the one that was looking and making sure everything was okay he was the one who was watching over her I think at one point the bus kind of jerked a little bit and you know he made sure that she was you know safe in the seat and she's still looking out the window looking at the front oblivious to all the other stuff because she knew her confidence was in her dad daddy's here I'm good. I can look around. I was like, oh, yeah, look, there's a tree over there. Oh, look, there's a tree. She could do all of that. Not having to worry about anything because daddy was there watching out the whole time, holding on to her the whole time, making sure she was okay. And that's how, how God, our heavenly father, wants us to see him. Daddy watching out for us all the time, providing and protecting the whole time. That's what he wants his children, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's what he wants for us. That's how he wants us to see him. That's how he wants us to live. I'm going to read from um, John chapter 1, verse, and I want to start at verse 11. 
He came to that which belonged to him, and he being Jesus. He came to that which belonged to him, to his own, his domain, creation, things, world. And they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the, the authority, power, privilege, right to become the children of God. That is, to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name, who owe their birth neither to blood, to blood nor to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of a natural father, but to God. They are born of God. You see, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we become the children of God. So you say right now, okay, I am a child of God. I'll give you a second. Let's do it again. <laughs> I am a child of God. I'll give you another second. Let's do it one more time. I am am a child of God and when you say that and however now we're only saying it three times right here but anytime something tries to creep up on you some type of fear or an anxiety or something uh, some type of concern or opposition and your uh, and fear will try to grab a hold of us but you see same thing like with the dad on the bus that little girl didn't have to fear a thing Daddy made sure everything was okay. Daddy made sure she was safe. So when those things try to creep in and affect your peace and infiltrate your joy, then you say again, I am a child of God. Now, from there, depending on what's going on, you add the rest to, to it. I am a child of God. I am protected. I am a child of God. I am provided for. He's watching over me. I am a child of God and by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And remember in these verses, John chapter 1, verses 11 to 13, okay? Who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh, nor to the will of man, but to God. God did this for us. Through Jesus Christ, God said, accept it receive it, confess it, you're my child. Let me watch over you. Let me provide for you. Let me do the things, manifest the promises unto you. Let's get out of God's way and let's trust dad. In fact, make it even a little more intimate, a little more personal, daddy. See God as daddy, not just some stuffy kind of image that religion will try to get us to hold to of, of, of here's a God who's sitting there and he's watching and he's stoic and oh no, no interaction. No, no, no. Except to beat you down when you make a mistake. Mm -mm. No, there are repercussions. You know, we go out there and we act silly, but isn't that a good dad too? To correct, to discipline, to chasten. See, just like that, that what I witnessed when a little girl, it, it, it was like just before their stop. So the little girl kind of slipped down, you know, to stand up and he said, no, no. And she sat back down. See, dad, dad, father, God, that's where, how he wants us to be with him. If he says, no, no, we have our plans. We have our goals. We have all our, our a whole, you know, take it out. And it's, we're coming close to, you know, on the end of the year, people are going to have their whole long list <laughs> of things. And let's see, these are my, this is what I'm going to do. Okay. These are the changes I'm going to make. These are my resolutions. We may have all of that going on. And God is like, no, 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 no. It could either be no flat out. No. Or it could be, no, let's, let's tweak that some. Or it could be, no, not right now, whatever. But see, when we know God and we know that we are uh, his child, when we know this, I'll say as we know this, then we'll come to trust him to take the, our long <laughs> list and, and say, Dad, you know, I'm, re I'm really thinking. And you, I mean, and I'm saying, Dad, I'm saying, Daddy, only because that's how intimate he wants us to be. You may call him Father, and that's cool. 
that's cool. You may call him Pop, whatever you want to call him. As long as you understand it's the intimacy that God desires you to have with him. And then you take that list or you take that thought, that idea, um, or that plan or the goal that you may have. And you say, Father God, Dad, Daddy, Pops, whatever you want to say, this is what I'm thinking. What do you say? Lord, a thought may cross our mind or an idea. I'm like, Lord, is this you? And if he says yes or um, uh, you, you get a peace, a settling, a settling in your spirit, man, and you're just like, oh, okay, all right. Then ask him, Lord, how do I proceed? A thought may come and say, Lord, or you may witness something or see something. Lord God, what do you want me to do with this information? How shall I process it? And sometimes a revelation is so great, we need to ask God to help us handle it, help us process it, help us hold our peace, help us to have peace, whatever it is. But see, God just wants us to see him and understand, come to me, I'm dad. Come sit with me, know that I have you. If the bus or the truck or the train or whatever of life stops short, I'm holding you. If the, if, if, let's see, if there are some drunkards in the back and they're just being obnoxious or whatever, or it could be something even more, da even dangerous. God wants us to know that, uh, uh, mm -mm, no, I'm shielding you. You're my daughter. You're my, my son. God wants us to know, oh, I got the provision. He, he had the dinner, the bag, the dinner in his hand. And I don't know what was in it, but it was a bag from the, a restaurant. Okay. So he got a bag of the dinner provision. Come on, baby. Come on. That's how God wants us. That's where we need to be. And never taking it for granted. As I said before, correction comes with this also. Obedience comes with this also. Trust God. Rely on God. Know that you're his baby girl, his baby boy. Know how special you are. See him as dad, daddy, pops, father. But see him in an intimate way and know that he is with you always, watching over you and making sure all goes well. Even in the mishaps and the challenges, dad is still there. So in the midst of the commotion with the two men in the back and they got off the bus, the little girl was still at peace because daddy had her by the hand. So let's reach up, take, daddy, take daddy's hand and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will follow you. I will trust you. I will rely on you. My faith is in you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Make sure we keep that Thanksgiving going. Amen. That's all I have for you today. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for coming. Give me thumbs up on the YouTube page under the video. Uh, let's see. So like, thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Share the love of God. Thank you for joining me in sharing the love of God. I'm excited about what God's going to do. And in your comments, if you have some testimonies to share, questions to ask, put them in the comments. I got you. <laughs> Actually, God's got you, right? <laughs> Praise God. Have a good one. Bye-bye.